New to the Gaia app for building and planning an overland route? Stick around, we're going to show you how easy it is to get started. We'll also be introducing you to a couple other very important sources of information that will ensure that you're traveling down roads and trails that you're legal to be on. We believe the best way to learn is through application, so we're taking you along as we navigate our way through the unknown using the Gaia app. You'll learn how to build a route, download somebody else's route, apply waypoints, and download the necessary maps for traveling off-grid. There are tons of cool features in the Gaia app. Way more than what we have time to go through in this video. But the little nuances of it are really easy to learn. Just sit down with it for an hour or so. Just play around with it. You'll get it. We're going to get right into planning and creating routes. And then we're actually going to take a trip using what we created. Now we put video quick links in the video description below that will jump ahead to all the Gaia specific topics. Use them to skip through our short video clips of our trip or go back and watch again. The device we're using Gaia on is an iPad Pro with the built-in GPS function. Now, it doesn't have a cell plan associated to it, so the only way to view detailed maps is to download them ahead of time at home. Besides, where we go, there's never any signal anyways. Here at home, we do some of our work in Gaia on a Windows 10 laptop. There are differences between the two platforms. Uh, we'll show you some of them as we go along. When it comes time to actually making a route and downloading maps, we'll be using our iPad. We just think it works a little better. I'll show you a few differences between the two though. Most noticeable is the toolbars. On the laptop, you'll see the toolbar is over on the far left. And it looks, uh, it looks quite a bit different than on the iPad. Then there's another over here by your username, drop down menu, and here's uh, a bunch of other selections. Now as you can see on the iPad, it's quite a bit different. Hit the plus sign up here and you get all these things. This one over here is for your map layers. These are the ones that are displayed up on top here and these are ones that you can choose from and there's just all kinds of them that you can go through. Over here this opens up another window. To get rid of this window you just hit that thing with the four arrows on it again. Before we get to any map building, downloading maps, any of that, we first need to make a file folder so we keep everything straight. To do that, on the laptop, we go up here to the upper right hand corner, bring down this drop down menu, go to folders, then click create a new folder, and Simple as that. And there's, you can see I practiced a couple times beforehand. But there's our folder. On the iPad, we'll go up here to the upper left hand corner, click that thing with the four arrows, then go down here, hit saved, stuff, then click on these three little dots right there that says create a folder, click it, and Type it in. Click save. And there you have it. So today we left the hotel from mid-Iowa. Um, somewhere, somewhere in the middle of Iowa. Doesn't right. matter. Uh, now we are, we're in the middle of Nebraska now in one of our favorite spots. Um, we always stop here when we're heading out to uh, Montana or uh, Wyoming and such. 
So now we found this uh, really nice little dispersed camping. There's dispersed camping throughout the whole uh, national forest here. Uh, it's really quite nice. Tomorrow we'll be talking about where we can drive and disperse camp legally on our public lands using Gaia and uh, we'll learn a little about the Avenza app. We're just driving by. We're not going to stop today because we've been here before, but if you're ever in western Nebraska, you owe it to yourself to stop. To find unique, even weird places like this, we recommend a website and a book called Atlas Obscura. make absolutely certain we're not driving or camping where we shouldn't be in the national forest and national grasslands, we cross-reference the motor vehicle usage maps in Gaia with the Avenza app. Avenza is the app the Forest Service uses for the official motor vehicle usage maps of the area. Gaia may not be quite as up to date. We think it's wise to get the legal information straight from the source. We're finding out that in this area we're in, our choices for dispersed camping are very limited. Like Mary just said, the Avenza app is the official app that the Forest Service uses to get their motor vehicle usage maps out to the public. It's free to download. I don't believe you can download it to a PC or laptop. I think it's only for mobile devices. Then, of course, once you get the app installed, just go to the Avenza app store uh, where, where their maps are, do a search for the national forest or national grasslands that uh, you're going to be traveling through, pick that map, download it to your device. Now the maps in Avenza are going to open up to look kind of like a PDF file. Up here and usually up in the upper left hand corner is the map legend. This tells you what we're legal to drive down one to pay close attention to is this trails open to wheeled vehicles 64 inches or less in width generally that's not an SUV or a, or a truck that is uh, like side by sides and something smaller uh, the next one down is the seasonal designation this is a shaded portion along a roadway like this right here that shows that it's closed for a particular time in the year. Uh, you'll see here the dates allowed are from uh, December 1st into August 31st. So the fall, those roads are closed. Now another thing we're looking for is dispersed camping. And that's designated by these little dots alongside the roadway. We'll find an example of that which you'll see them here along this one and along this one that has a seasonal designation. There's also, normally, not on all maps in Avenza or the uh, U.S. Forest Service, but most also have a table that shows which uh, roadways do allow dispersed camping. And that tells us officially where we can drive and where we can disperse camp. Now tomorrow we're going to show you how to identify public lands on Gaia and some tips on finding legal places to camp, along with choosing and displaying the map layers in Gaia. This morning we left the Ogallala National Grasslands and we came just south of the Bighorn National Forest. Now we're here near the Hole in the Wall, Wyoming, and we hiked down to the Outlaw Cave and it's really just beautiful out here. In this area we're heading into, land ownership is like a checkerboard. It's a big mixture of BLM land, uh, state-owned land, and private ownership. To distinguish those areas, we're using the public land layer in Gaia. The yellow is BLM, blue is state-owned, and white is private. All right, now comes time to pick some layers. 
What you do is you simply tap or click on the map layer icon and that'll bring down this menu here. The ones on the top, the ones with the red dots next to them are the ones that are visible on the map and everything down below are ones you can choose from. And as you can see, there are tons of them. Uh, hunting overlays, all sorts of stuff there. Weather overlays, you name it. Satellite imagery, all sorts of stuff to choose from. In fact, there, there might be a few too many in there to choose from. Now to make a uh, layer visible, simply choose what you want and tap on the green dot and that'll send it up to the top. And here you can see to, uh, to view layers underneath, usually the top layer up here, the motor vehicle usage map is what, we, is what we have up here. Usually that is more pronounced on the screen, but you can lessen that to let the, bottom, the layers underneath it come through better by just moving the slider. See how that's kind of dimming those roads. But you want to have your most important layer, especially the motor vehicle usage map, up on the top of the selections. That way it'll have all of its functions and come through the clearest. Now to get one of these layers uh, that are visible to become invisible, you just click on the red dot and it goes back down to the bottom. Now speaking of the motor vehicle usage map, let's go through a couple of features that it has. One of them is if you just tap on a roadway, you get this box coming up and that's the name of the road and the Forest Service number. Click on the uh, little dot there and this will tell you exactly what vehicles are allowed on this road and when it's open. So this is only open from June until uh, December. You click on another one, this one over here, and you'll see this one's open year round, and these are all the vehicles that it'll allow on it. This one is very limited. Uh, it's only open to ATVs, motorcycles, and vehicles that are less than 50 inches wide. So that is not us. We can't go down that one. Something else you can do is just tap anywhere in the National Forest that comes up and then you get this window that pops open oh, popular hikes, Cloud Peak Wilderness oh we stayed at the Sheep Mountain Lookout once that is an awesome place to to spend the night yeah, so all kinds of stuff there unfortunately areas that support dispersed camping are not displayed on the Gaia app you do need to go back to Avenza to make sure that uh, it's legal to camp in that area. Now for us, we like to keep our layer simple. We just use the bare bones. Normally just the national map um, and the base map for Gaia. A motor vehicle usage map when we're in national forests, nat national grasslands. Another one that we really like is the Nat Geo layer. This is not in all of the U.S. It's only in select areas in the U.S. But this gives great detail on, uh, here we got icons for cross-country skiing. Uh, it lists all the hiking trails, points of interest, uh, all kinds of neat details that you can't get in any of the other maps. And of course we already talked a little bit about it, and that's the, the private land layer, which will tell us uh, who owns it if we can legally be on that land if it's private or not. I'll get you a section so you can see that. It actually even gives the owner of the land which is kind of neat in case you have to try to contact somebody. To move layers around you just simply touch here on the right side and drag it down until you get what you need up on top. So our advice is just dive in and start playing around with layers, uh, looking at all of them, testing them out, find out what works best for you and the area that you'll be traveling in. Most often, dispersed camping is allowed on public lands that we own through the Bureau of Land Management. 
For state controlled land, always check with the state that you're in. Like here in Wyoming, dispersed camping is not allowed on state land. Also check for seasonal, uh, special hunting, and elk calving closures and restrictions on certain areas. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day. We're gonna show you how to upload someone else's route into your Gaia account, how to build your own route, and how to create waypoints. Okay, I know a lot of you out there are wondering when the heck is he gonna get to how to build a route? Right now. This may seem to be a daunting task to a lot of people, but believe me, this is crazy simple. Now, once you figure out where you wanna go, and then you do your research and make sure and determine that your vehicle is legal to go down those roads and trails. Then, on our laptop, we go over here, click on create a route. Then right here, we need to make sure this is in driving mode. Then, we go to our very start of this route, which is gonna be right here at the highway where we get off onto the smaller roads and the trails, and we click it. And that's going to set a little point there. Now we go down to an intersection and click there. Now we want to go straight south, so we're going to go down here and click right there. Then we want to take this little trail right here. So we'll go down the next intersection and click. Then we want to go over here, but it's going to want to keep us on this main road here, but we want to take this side road right here. So I'll show you here. We'll click down here at this intersection, and that's going to snap that line to that road that we don't really want. So we'll just get on it, click it and hold it, and drag it up here. There, that's what we wanted. One thing I don't like about the laptop is this box pin right here. Um, it's kind of a nuisance. And then we want to take this trail. This is a good one too. We've been down, well, we've been down all these, but that one is a particularly nice one. We'll click here. And then we'll get back to the highway like this. And, if I can get it away from that box, that is our route. Then when you get the route exactly the way you want it, click Save. And we'll make this a brighter color. Uh, let's do this. Eh, I don't like that one. Let's go red. And then you can also you give it a title. And then any kind of notes. And that's it. Now on the iPad, it's very much the same way. We begin by touching the little circle with the cross in it. Create route. And then we take this little blue dot that shows up. And we come up here to the entrance off of the highway to the National Forest. We'll put it there. Then we'll come down here to this intersection press it and that's not the way we want to go so what we're going to have to do is move this blue dot down here somewhere somewhere along that road that we want and then touch here again there we go now it's down here where we want it and in this route we're going to take these small trails off to the east so we'll put a dot right there and then over to this intersection and I didn't want to go that way. So I'll take that blue dot again, drag it down here on the road I want. There we go. And we'll come out the same place out onto the highway. And that's it. And one thing I did forget to mention is down here in the lower left is that mode. Make sure it's on driving. Luckily, it already was, otherwise I would have had to change it. Let's see what happens when you change it to cycling. Oh, see it did change. 
hiking let's keep it on driving that way we know that we're going to be legal and we're not trying to push our forerunner down a hiking trail somewhere then when you're done when you have it the way you want it go up here in the upper right hit save uh, we'll give it a name and save again and there we have it now we're going to take that route and make sure that we save it into the proper folder so we're able to find it when we need to and this is basically the same on the iPad and the desktop or laptop you just touch the route and then the circle tap that go to choose parent folder and we want this in the July 2020 that's it now to delete a route or a waypoint you simply touch on it hit that again and go up here in these three little dots and delete Another fantastic resource for areas you're not familiar with are Facebook groups. The nice folks at Wyoming Overland were instrumental in helping us plan this section of our trip. From route recommendations to snow conditions in higher elevations, we owe them a big thank you. The route we're taking now is one they shared with us. Which brings up something to think about. Can you trust other people's routes? For that, our advice is always trust but verify with other sources. This is how you can import somebody else's route into your Gaia account. This is a good website with lots and lots of uh, trails that they share. You just find the route that you want, go down here, and click to download. Then log into Gaia. On our laptop, we go up here to the upper right, go down to upload and select the file go into our downloads and there it is click it and that's all there is to it on our iPad we simply emailed that link to to ourselves you can also on the iPad go through their website and do it that way um, this is just the way we did it there's a lot of different ways to do it We'll just go into our email, sorry, here opened. We'll do a long touch on that, then click share. And see if, yep, right there. Then copy to Gaia. And there it is, right there. We're gonna also make sure this is in the folder that we want. Oh, that's not it. Make sure this is in the folder that we want. We'll just click here. Change folder. Uh, we're going to want it in July 2020. This one. And that's it. How to follow your route on your map while you're driving. There's basically three different ways. And that's controlled by this little icon up in the far upper right hand corner on the iPad. When you click on it and turn it black or dark green, whatever color that is, uh, in this mode, the map stays stationary on the screen with north pointing up, and then your position locator moves along the route. Tap it and turn it red, then the map moves, but your position locator stays in the same spot right in the center of the screen. Then change it to this green with the two arrows pointing at each other. The position locator stays right in the center of the screen, but the map moves around it with your direction of travel always pointing up.
So we finished up that trail that Wyoming Overland supplied for us, and that was an awesome trail. Now we made it into the Bighorn National Forest. Now we're taking a route that we just came up with on the fly. This is nothing we pre-planned. We'll just spend the rest of the day freestyle driving and exploring. Along the way, we're always referencing the motor vehicle usage map. This is where it's kind of nice to have the two displays, one with Avenza and one with Gaia. Now we knew that we were gonna be heading in this general direction, so during our planning at home, we made some notes on Gaia, suggesting some decent places to legally camp. One great thing about using both maps to cross-reference each other, you can see on the Gaia, there's trails going off to the side, but on the official motor vehicle usage map, those trails are not visible, so those we can't go down. These trails, on the Gaia that are dashed like that are just for ATVs, horses, and such. It's one of those things, it can get a little tricky. So it turns out those two spots we were going to check out, the ones that we kind of planned on at home, they turned out to not be accessible. One was uh, down a road that had a lot of deadfall from the winter. Nobody has cleaned it up yet, so we couldn't get through there at all and another one was down a road that is gated off. So fortunately, we uh, found another road that is legal to be on, and we found a really nice campsite. So all's well that ends well. When you're looking for a dispersed site and you see one that others have obviously been using, use it. There's no sense in disturbing another spot. This is a really great site and we're lucky we found it. We've got the mountains over there and it's very secluded. There's no one else around us. Yeah, it's awesome. at a dead end, so we're not expecting any traffic. There's a snowmobile trail, but there's no snow right now. No snow so right know. here. There's a lot of snow on the mountains, but not right here. Tomorrow we're going to show you how to find points of interest and how to mark them on the Gaia map. This morning we left the southern end of the National Forest and came up here to the northern end of the Bighorn National Forest. And the route that we brought in is a route that we built in Gaia last year, and we actually used it on last year's trip out here. Um, it's, it's a really nice, uh, what's really cool about it, it's, uh, what's the name of it? Red Grade Road. And it gains a ton of elevation in a very short distance coming up. That was kind of exciting. I think we went from like 4,000 feet to over 7,000 feet just like that, you know, driving like this. We're gonna spend today just bumming around looking for day hikes uh, and seeing the sights. Before we left home, we did a search for day hikes in the area where we'll be traveling through. And there are tons of websites out there for that. They all give the mileage, rate the difficulty, and some even give photos. Then we just made a waypoint where those are located. How to make a waypoint. Incredibly easy, and this works about the same on the iPad as it does the desktop. Now this is for a possible campsite. First go up here, click there, add a waypoint. Now you'll see it here, it's not where we want it, so we have to touch it and drag it up here where we want it. Then hit save. Then we'll put in a title. Choose an icon nice little tent and then we make sure that it is in the folder that we want it and that's all there is to it just hit save and there it is during our planning before we left home we did get a message from our friends at Wyoming Overland that there may be some snow still across the roadway up here and then a couple days ago when we were in cell service we got a message from them saying that they believe that a uh, local Jeep Club came up here and busted through it so we should be good this will be interesting to uh, to see We'll be talking about different ways to follow a pre-made route on Gaia and 
how to prepare and download detailed maps for traveling off-grid. This morning we're going to be heading down out of the Bighorn Mountains and going to one of our favorite places on the map. This is where we're going to spend our last night out before heading for home. Now over the many years that we've spent exploring the Black Hills of South Dakota, we've gained a, a lot of information on trails and suitable uh, dispersed campsites and such. We, when we first started, it was all paper maps. So we transferred those routes, those highlighted routes we made on them and the notes we made on them to Gaia. So now we have uh, a ton of information on the Black Hills. So right now we are gonna be heading to one of our favorite campsites of all times here. To learn more about the Black Hills and see more footage of the Black Hills, go to our YouTube channel. We've got a couple of videos on there. In fact, we're driving our old FJ uh, during those two. So that's what we're gonna do. When we leave a Wi-Fi spot because our iPad doesn't have a cell plan associated to it, Gaia can no longer display detailed maps. So we need to make and save them to our device before we go venturing out. We have the area that we're going to be going into on our iPad on screen. And then you just touch here. Download maps. Then that's going to display a box with the blue dots at each corner. Now this big red area up here in the corner, that's a map that we already downloaded some time ago. So we're going to drag this down. We don't need that again. So we're going to drag the corners of the new map we're building with these blue dots. And we're only going to include the area where we're going to be off main roads. When we're on main roads, our Garmin takes care of that fine. This is only for when we're off the beaten path. This keeps the file sizes low and it takes a lot less time to save to the device will oftentimes make um, many, many maps for just one trip. And then we go down here, touch save. And then we'll add a title. And we'll go down here and make sure, yep, it's saving to the right folder. Then hit save again. Now this little thing, this little wheel that's spinning up in the upper left hand corner, that's indicating that your map is being saved to your device. And this may take a little while, depending on how big of a map you're making. Now, when we're traveling in that area, totally off-grid, like we usually are, we're going to have a map with all the details that we built into it. And it's automatically going to come up on the iPad. Well, that should get you started. We know there's a lot of stuff we didn't get to in this video. If you have any questions at all, please Put them in the comment section below and we'll do our very best to answer them. And if you have any answers, please chime in. Like I mentioned early in the video, we are not Gaia experts. The app has really helped us make planning trips much easier, so we just wanted to pass along some of the basics that we've learned to you. We're thinking of doing more videos on Gaia, so if you've got any ideas, put them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications.